Jai Om Vishnu Pa Shila Bhakti Pavan Janardhan Maharaj Ki Jai. Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Atta Parakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavam Sya Shri Rupam Sagrajantam Sagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Paran Sahagana Lalita Shivishakam Vitam Sya Oma Jnana Timaranda Sya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Shakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shi Gurave Nama Gorva Bistam Supurakam Gurganara Sisha Sambuchitam Chintya Chintya Samasta Veda Nipunam Shi Rupa Patanugam Govinda Vidam Ujwalam Bharatanum Bhaktian Vidam Sundaram Bande Vishwa Gurunsha Divyat Bhagavad Prem Noe Bija Pradam Devum Divyatanum Suchandavana Nambalar Kachelanchitam Sandra Nanda Puram Sadeka Varanam Bhairagya Vidyambudim Shri Siddhanta Nidim Subhakti Lasitam Saraswatanam Bharam Bandetam Shubaram Mareka Sharanam Nyashishwara Sridharam Bansha Kopatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patita Nam Pavenibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Namo Maha Bharanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gorata Vishenama So we're hearing from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, The Hidden Treasure of the Sweet Absolute, a translation and commentary by Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj. This has been translated from uh, Bengali to English by Bhakti Ananda Sagar Maharaj. So this is chapter 13. Prakriti Purusha Viveka Yoga. Distinction between matter and spirit. Arjuna Vacha Prakritim Purusham Chaiva Chetram Chetra Gyamevacha Etad Veditum Ichami Gyanam Gayam Chakeshava Arjuna said, O Keshava, I would like to know about material nature, the person, the field, the knower of the field, knowledge, and the object of knowledge. O Keshava, I would like to know about material nature, the person, the field, the knower of the field, knowledge, and the object of knowledge. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, idam shariram kunteya, Chetram iti abadhiyate etad yo veti tam prahu chetragya iti tad vira. The Supreme Lord said, O Arjuna, this body is known as the field. One who knows this field is described by the learned as the knower of the field. O Arjuna, this body is known as the field. One who knows this field is described by the learned as the knower of the field. Chetra gyam chapi mambidi sarva chetre shu bharata chetra chetra gyayor gyanam yadthads gyanam matam mama. O Bharata, you should also know me as the knower of the ball fields. This knowledge of the field and of the knower of the field is true knowledge, in my opinion. So, the individual person or jiva soul is the knower of the field. The field is this field of activities, the field, this body. And Krishna says here, O Bharata, you should also know me as the knower of all fields. This knowledge of the field and the knower of the fields is true knowledge in my opinion. So this will also help us to understand the distinction between the jiva so or the living entity and the Lord. The, we are the knower of the field and the field being our body. So we, our consciousness is spread throughout this body and we we are aware of what's happening in this body. 
But Krishna is the knower of all fields, so he's knower of all what is going on in everyone's uh, experience, everyone's body. So there's a distinction. It means that the uh, knower of the field, his perception or her perception, is limited to what's happening in their particular body. So they're aware if somebody touches them or somebody pushes them. But they're not aware if somebody touches or pushes another person beyond their sight or beyond. So, but Krishna is, says he's the knower of all fields. So that means there's a distinction between the individual soul and the supreme soul. Tachyatram yadcha yadriksha yadvikari yataschya yat Sacha yosha yat prabhavascha tatsama sena me shrinu. Now hear from me briefly what this field is, its constitution, transformations, causes, and effects, and who the knower of the field is and of his potency. Now hear from me briefly what this field is, its constitution, transformations, causes, and effects, and who the knower of the field is and of his potency. Rishibir Bahuda Gitam Chando Bir Vividai Pritak Brahma Sutra Padais Chaiva Hetu Mad Bir Venis Chitai This has been taught in many ways by various sages. The, this has been taught in many, many ways by various sages, the different Vedas, and the aphorisms of the Brahma Sutra with its conclusive logic. So, so now hear from me what this field is, its constitution, transformation, transformations, causes, and effects, and who the knower of the field is and of his potency. This has been taught in many ways by various sages, the different Vedas and the aphorisms of the Brahma Sutra with its conclusive logic. Mahabhutani ahankaro buddhir avyaktam evacha indriyani dashaikam cha pancha chendriya gochara icha dvesha sukam dukam sangatas chetana driti Etatshetram samasena savikaram udaritam. The five primary elements of ether, air, fire, water, and earth, ego intelligence and the unmanifest material nature, the ten senses, the mind, and the five objects of the senses, likes, dislikes, happiness, unhappiness, the aggregate, the aggregate, consciousness, and determination. All these are summarily known as the field and its transformations. The five primary elements of ether, air, fire, water, and earth, ego, intelligence, and the unmanifest material nature, the ten senses, the mind, and the five objects of the senses, likes, dislikes, happiness, unhappiness, the aggregate, consciousness, and determination. All these are summarily known as the field and its transformations. Amanitvam, Adambitvam, Ahimsa, Shantir, Arjavam, Acharyo, Pasanam, Shocham, Staryam, Atma, Vinigraha, Indriyarteshu Vairagyam Anahangara Evaja Janma Mrityu Jaravyari Dukkha Doshanudarshanam Asaktir Anabhishvanga Putra Dara Grihadishu Nityam Cha Samachitatvam Ishtanishto Papadishu Mayi Chananya Yogena Bhaktar Avyabicharini Vivikta Desha Sevitvam Aratir Janasam Sadi Adyatma Gyananityatvam Tatva Gyanarta 
darshanam etad jnanam miti proktam agyanam yad atonyata etad jnanam miti proktam agyanam yad atonyata desirelessness desirelessness for honor pridelessness nonviolence forbearance honesty service to the spiritual master purity stability self-control detachment from the objects of the senses absence of egoism awareness of the mis- miseries of birth disease old age and death worldly detachment absence of doting on children wife home etc constant equanimity in desirable or undesirable circumstances undeviating pure devotion to me residing in a solitary place indifference to mundane association constancy and self-knowledge and the vision of the goal of tr- true knowledge all these qualities have been said to denote knowledge anything contrary to this is to be considered ignorance this is four verses i'll repeat the translation desirelessness for honor pridelessness nonviolence forbearance honesty service to the spiritual master purity stability self-control detachment from the objects of the senses absence of egoism awareness of the miseries of birth disease old age and death worldly detachment absence of doting on children wife home etc constant equanimity in desirable or undesirable circumstances undeviating pure devotion to me residing in a solitary place indifference to mundane association constancy in self knowledge and the vision of the goal of true knowledge all these qualities have been said to denote knowledge anything contrary to this is to be considered ignorance yeyam yatat pravakshami yajyat bam mritam ashnute anadi mat param brahma nasatan nasad uchate now i shall describe the object of knowledge realizing which one attains the nectar of life resting in me it is known as brahman eternal neither being nor non-being now i shall describe the object of knowledge realizing which one attains the nectar of life resting in me it is known as brahman eternal eternal neither being nor non-being sarvata panipadam tat sarvatokshi shiro mika mukam sarvata shuti maloke sarvam avritya tishtati everywhere are his hands and feet everywhere are his eyes heads mouth and ears he pervades the entire universe as the super soul everywhere is his, are his hands and feet everywhere are his eyes hands mouth and ears he pervades the entire universe as the super soul sarvendriya guna basam sarvendriya vivarjitam asaktam sarva brichchaiva nirgunam guna bokricha he illuminates all the senses and their functions yet he is without material senses he is completely aloof to everything yet he is the maintainer of all vishnu he is transcendental to the three modes of material nature yet he is the lord of all qualities so everywhere are his hands and feet everywhere is are his eyes heads mouths and ears he pervades the entire universe 
is a super soul. He illuminates all the senses and their functions, yet he is without material senses. He is completely aloof to everything, yet he is the maintainer of all. Vishnu he is transcendental to the three modes of material nature, yet he is the Lord of all qualities. So the Lord is pervading everything, and how he's pervading everything is through his multiple energies. Antaranga Shakti, or his spiritual energy, and there is a plane of devotion which is eternally existing. I was thinking about where the verse of uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, where it describes that um, Savai Pum Sam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhaktira Dhoksaje Ahaituki Apradiyatma Yajatma Suprasidati. So the supreme goal of life is to establish a, a loving relationship with the Lord. Savai Pum Sam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhaktira Dhoksaje. So we there's this have a serving relationship with the Lord, and that relationship would be ahaituki yapradiyatma. The would be without any material motivation and without any stoppage, without any interruption. So if we think about that on the plane of this material world, it's very hard to think of a person engaging in service without any material motivation, especially if we're coming from the material platform of this world, everything we are doing is with some mental calculation, some uh, other considerations, what's good for, good for one, what's good for me. And so it's hard to think of without any material motivation to come to that plane of devotion establishing a loving relationship with the Lord. And moreover, haituki pradyatma, that there will be no interruption. We see there's so many interruptions that we experience because we are a servant of the mind and senses. And then sometimes we will wake up and we'll be very happy and go on to our service. And other days we are very tired and we are uh, very uh, suffering from some mental disturbance happening in our mind, perhaps due to our body, perhaps just due to, uh, you know, all these, what we say, the different, um, uh, different disturbances, adiyatmic, adibotic, adidaivika, the disturbances of my own mind and body, the disturbances caused by other persons, or even other persons can include other living entities. They may be, they may be uh, insects. They may be molecular disturbances like amoebas, or may they even may be viruses. But we may be disturbed by those other living entities, and then uh, adidaivika by. St hurricanes or storms or fire, forest fires, or fires, or, uh, or earthquakes, or so many other things that can happen, uh, Adidaivika. But in any event, it's very hard to think of a plane where there's no material mo motivation that I'm going to act on that plane, and that I'm also going to not experience any interruption in my service. Even so, how can I think that I will come to such a standard that I will elevate, elevate myself to that standard? But if we think of it this way, that that plane of devotion eternally exists, and it can descend to me. It can de descend to me by the mercy of the Vaishnavas. It can descend to me by the mercy of the spiritual master, uh, Guru Kripa, or it can come to me by, as I said, uh, by the 
the creep of the Lord or his devotees. And there's so many ways in which I can get that can come to me from from above, can just come down to me. And so we can say that it is causeless means that that plane of devotion exists and there's nothing I'm doing to cause that plane to exist. Rather, it may come to me through the mercy of the Lord and his devotees. So in that sense, there's no material cause because that plane is completely spiritual and it is descending through uh, spiritual conduits, you could say, through the... And, and also, you could say that plane doesn't have any interruption. So you can think, how can it not have any interruption? Well, the example may given, be given of a great force which is irresistible. For instance, for instance, something like a, um, a tsunami. A tsunami carries everything and everyone within its immediate area. So here, where we are living, they're very proud to call this place, Santa Cruz, they used to call it Surf City. And we see there are people in the ocean. And especially we see persons who are not so expert in the surfing art. They are sometimes bobbing on the surface, sitting on their board in the hot sun, waiting and waiting so that they can maybe catch a wave. Of course, those who are very expert, they can catch all waves. But if you consider the case of a tsunami, everyone's sitting on their board trying to catch a wave. But if a tsunami comes, it will carry everybody for miles and miles. It will carry them. So that we can say. Another way of saying that uh, it has no interruption, has no material Cause, because that plane of pure devotion exists. It has its own plane, it can descend to it. And it has no interruption, may also be considered to mean it's irresistible. It's irresistible, it cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped, it's irresistible. It's without material motivation, the plane can descend, and it's irresistible, which means it will have no interruption. Like that, so anyway, that plane can come down to us. And here it says, he is situated. So I'll continue what we were saying here. Now I shall describe the objects of knowledge, realizing which one attains the nectar of life. Resting in me, it is known as Brahman, eternal neither being nor non-being. Everywhere are his head, hands and feet. Everywhere are his eyes, he, heads, mouths, and ears. He pervades the entire universe as a super soul. He illuminates all the senses and their functions, yet he is without material senses. So the Lord has no material senses, but yet he has divine senses. He is... He, as we've heard, all his senses can do what he can, he can do with any of his senses what his other senses do. His senses are completely spiritual. He's completely aloof to everything, yet he is a maintainer of all Vishnu. He is transcendental to the three modes of material nature, yet he is the Lord of all qualities. And Bahirantascha Bhutanam Acharam Charam Evacha Sukshmat vat tad avigayam durastam chantike chatat. He is situated within and without all moving and stationary beings, near yet far, subtle and therefore most difficult to comprehend. He is situated within and without all moving and stationary beings. Near yet far, subtle and therefore most difficult to com comprehend. So he's situated within and without because Krishna, as we said, he has his energies, he has spiritual energy, he has marginal energy, the living entities, and he has uh, he has his bahiranga shakti, his external energy or nescience, maya. So. 
these are all energies of the Lord, yet he's not identical to his energies. He's the controller of the energies, but he is distinct from his energies. So in that sense, he's situated within everything because his energies and his everything is his energy, and then therefore he's within everything. But at the same time, he's without because he has his own individual existence. Like... Avibhaktam cha bhuteshu vibhaktam eva cha stitam bhuta bratrir cha tadzgeyam grashnishnu prabhavishnu cha. Although, indivisi although indivisible, he appears as divided in all beings. He is to be known as the one who manifests, maintains, and devours all beings. Although indivisible, he appears as divided in all, in all beings. He is to be known as the one who manifests, maintains, and devours all beings. So, divided in all beings. So, we used to hear the term, Srila Prabhupada gave this term, he said, um, separated parts and parcels. That was his term. The living entities, the each person. We are separated parts and parcels. Although indivisible, he appears as divided in all beings. So uh, each living entity has their own, as we heard before, their own chetragya, their own field of activity. They're in the knower of the field. The Lord is the knower of all fields. But uh, there are innumerable living entities, and all of them have the quality of Satchidananda and Vigraha, Satchidananda Vigraha. They're all, they're all eternal. They're all conscious living entities. They're in their original spiritual state. They are completely satisfied, happy, Satchidananda Vigraha, and they have their own Form. In fact, a living entity, the jiva, has its own own existence and can also have a, and also a spiritual form. Depending on the develop spiritual development, that can show the living entity can show uh, itself or his self or herself according to as having a different relationship with the Lord of either Dasya Ras or Sakya Ras or Vatsalya Ras or Madhura Ras. And depending on the Ras, then the living entity will be showing him, him or herself according to that nature. Those in Madhura Ras will have a feminine appearance uh, and they will have a relationship with the Lord. In that way, there are different in, in Vrindavan, there are different gopis. In Dwarka, there are different queens related with Krishna. In Vaikuntha, there are innumerable Lakshmis. So they have, and there's Madhura Ras, and there's, then there's Vatsalya Ras, the parents of Krishna, Nandan Maharaj and Yashoda Mai. But this can also include persons who have a relationship, for instance, as an elder to the Lord, and maybe they'll be Krishna's Krishna's guru, Sandipani Muni, or or elderly or gopis, elderly gopas, coward boys. In relationship with Mahaprabhu, also he had, he had his spiritual master, uh, Kesha Bharati, uh, was said his sannyas guru Ishwara Puri, who when he went to Gaya, uh, brought him into the chanting of the holy name, or so it seemingly appeared. Then Mahaprabhu had 
Guru Varga uh, Puri, uh, Paramananda Puri, and uh, other persons. So he has different relationships. Well, he appears as he is known to be known. To me. So I read this seventeen. Avibhaktam chatputeshu vibhaktam eva cha stitam bhuta bratri cha tadskeyam grashishnu prabhavishnu cha. Although indivisible, he appears as divided in all beings. He is to be known as the one who manifests, maintains, and devours all beings. Although indivisible, he appears as divided in all beings. He is to be known as the one who manifests, maintains, and devours all beings. So there, there is appearance, maintenance, growth, and ultimately the annihilation that is going on. So eighteen. Joj Jyotisham Apitad Jyotish Tamasa Paramam Ud Jyotisham Apitad Jyotish Tamasa Param Uchate Gyanam Gayam Gyana Gamyam Ridi Sarvasya Dishtitam He is known as the illuminator of the luminaries. Beyond darkness, situated in the hearts of all beings, he is knowledge, the object of knowledge, reached by knowledge. He is knowledge, the object of knowledge, reached by knowledge. He is known as the illuminator of, all, of the luminaries. Beyond darkness, situated in the heart, hearts of all beings, he is knowledge. The object of knowledge, reached by knowledge. Gyanam gayam gyana gyana gamyam. Is knowledge the object of knowledge, reached by knowledge? Iti chetram data gyanam. Gayam choktum samasata madbhakta etad vidyaya mad bhava yopapadyate. The field knowledge and the object of knowledge have been briefly described by me. Realizing these truths, my devotees attain love for me. The field knowledge and the object of knowledge has been Briefly described by me, realizing these truths, my devotee attains love for me. So, read this first Prakritim Burusham Chaiva Vidi Anadi Ubavapi. Vikarams chagunams chaiva vidi prakriti sambhavan. Know that both material nature, maya, and the person, individual soul, are beginningless, and know that the transformations, body senses and their functions, and the transformations of the modes of nature, such as pleasure, pain, sorrow, and delusion, are born of material nature. Know that both material nature, maya, and the person, individual soul, are beginningless, and know that the transformations, body senses and their functions, and the transformations of the modes, modes of nature, such as pleasure, pain, sorrow, and delusion, are born of material nature. So, Maya is an energy of the Lord, uh, is beginningless. We hear about that 
elsewhere where it says daiviyesha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya mam evaye prapadyante mayamitam tarantite that that energy maya captures the living entities but that maya that energy is is a uh, prakriti daivi prakriti empowered by the lord the, that maya is eternal in the sense that uh, that lord is maya is eternally existing sometimes manifest sometimes not manifest at the time of um pralaya the material universes the material world maybe uh taken back into the body of vishnu but again there will be a manifestation and then again again the material nature will ex- will be manifested so it is said elsewhere we read in shila prabhupada's explanation bhagavad gita he says that five things are existing the lord the living entity the material nature time and karma and he says of these four are eternally existing the lord the material nature uh time and the living entity us but the fifth element karma is not eternal that not eternally existing so it may seem like that the living entity since time immemorial is in the material nature but that can change that can change by the will of the lord and his devotees so know that both material nature my and the person individual soul are beginningless are beginningless and know that the transformations body senses and their functions and the transformations of the modes of nature such as pleasure pain sorrow and delusion are born of material nature but one doesn't have to be subject to all these different transformations and their and the body senses and their function the transformations of the modes of nature such as pleasure pain sorrow and delusion they're born of material nature one doesn't have to be under the uh control the shackles of material nature one doesn't have to be uh in that way because maya can exist but as we quoted a verse about daivi prakriti maya is empowered by the lord to cause illusion for the living entities but maya under the lord's direction will release the living entities daiviyesha mama daiviyeshe yesha gunamayi mama maya duratiya mam evaye prapadyante mayami tam tarantite but when the living entity surrenders to the lord then maya releases him from all shackles so at this time going to stop her and we'll sing hari harai oh. hari harai nama krishna charavaya nama Janavaya Maravaya Keshavaya Nama Gopago Vinda Ram Shri Maru Sudan Giridari Gopinatha Mara Nama Shri Jaganya Nityananda Shri Advaita Chandra Dharadara Shri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatam Bhakta Raghunath 
Sri Jiva Gopala Bhata Dasa Raguna Echai Gosai Kori Charana Bhanda Jai Te Vignana Shabhishta Puran Echai Gosai Jarmui Charadas Tasabar Padarinu Mura Panchagras Kadir Charana Sevi Bhakta Sani Bhas Janame Janame More Abhilas Echai Gosai Jabe Bhaje Koila Bhas Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Kori La Prakash Anande Bolo Hari Bhaja Vindavan Shri Guru Vaishnava Pare Majai Aman Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koriyas Harinam Sankirtana Kohe Narachamudas Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koriyas Harinam Sankirtana Kohe Narantamadas Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nita Gora Hare Bo, Hare Bo, Hare Bo. Hari Bo Gita Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Jai Saparikara Shishi Guru Guranga Gandhar Vika Giri Dari Juki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramansa Paramajaka Chariyashta Tara Sada Shishi Mat Shila Bhakti Sundar Gobinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramansa Paramajaka Chariyashta Tara Sada Shishi Mat Shila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Bhagavan Srila Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Goswain Thakur Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Gaur Ki Shordas Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Satchi Dhananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Vaishnava Sarabhama Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai 
Rupanuga Guru Bharga ki jai, Namachari Shila Haridas Thakur ki jai, Shri Rupa Sanatana Bhatta Raghunath, Shri Jiva Gopal Bhada, Dasha Raghunath, Shad Goswami Prabhu ki jai, Premsika Osha Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gananhar Shri Vasari, Shri Gaura Bhakta Vrindha ki jai, Srila Vishwavarenya Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada ki jai, Jai Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Nirmalacharya Maharaj ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Madhacharya Vrinda ki jai, Ananda Koti Vaishna Vrinda ki jai, Sri Navadip Dham ki jai, Sri Namayapur ki jai, Saparshita Sri Nityananda Prabhu ki jai, Saparshita Sri Ma Prabhu ki jai, Sri Kuladvip ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat ki jai, Sokel Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Sevashram ki jai, Ganga Devi ki jai, Tulasi Maharani ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Shri Vrindavan Dham ki jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Gopi Govardhan, Sham Kuna Radha Kunda Kalindi Yamuna Ju ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan ki jai, all the assembled devotees ki jai, Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Bo. Jai Om Vishnu Bhakti Pavan Janardha Maharaj ki jai.